Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys for getting out of bed a little bit earlier to join me this morning for my presentation on staying connected, motiva motivating yourself, your, or sorry, motivating yourself, your staff, and your student staff through a virtual experience. So I'm happy to have you with me today. And as you can tell, my coffee has not kicked in yet either. So we're gonna have a great time. And um, just another public service announcement before I hit the next slide, I love cats. So you may see a lot of cats throughout this PowerPoint presentation and I apologize now if you are not a cat person. So just by get, uh, getting started, I wanted to kind of wake everybody up a little bit. So I figured let's go ahead and do some introductions. So if you guys don't mind unmuting yourselves and saying, you know, your current institution, what position you currently hold and what does motivation mean to you? Hi, I'm Tatiana Marshall. I am the coordinator for student engagement at Gordy Beacom College and I'm also an area coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, motivation means to me is doing something that you really enjoy and it doesn't feel like a obligation. You just want to do it. Thank you, Tatiana, I appreciate that. Hi, my name is Angela Delphine Mackler, she, her, hers. I'm a residence hall coordinator at West Virginia University and um, motivation um, to me is just the ability to keep pushing forward and um, you know, inspiring others to, to take those next steps and to do their absolute best with whatever role they're in. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Prati, Director of Residence Life at Felician University, and motivation to me is like continuing to have the drive and the passion to keep doing something. Thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is Terrence Haynes, he and his uh, Lafayette College, Assistant Director of Residence Life, Deputy Title IX Coordinator. Uh, to me, motivation is just having that inspiration and ability to keep going and get a task completed uh, in the right amount of time. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Spencer Norman. I'm an area coordinator at Arcadia University. And to me, motivation is, you know, focused on the why, why we're doing something, as well as being able to um, replenish and fill our buckets uh, when they are low. Very true. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. I am a coordinator of residence life operations at Georgia Court University in New Jersey. Um, to me, motivation is really just that, that drive that keeps people going every day and keeps us coming back um, through the good times and the bad. Thank you. Anybody else? I don't want to cut anybody off. It's hard to see everybody. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew Price, uh, and I am one of the associate directors at Shepherd University in West Virginia. Um, and I think motivation just boils down to, uh, for me, just a belief or just belief in general in the team and yourself and um, a future uh, in the students that we'll work with, just all wrapped up in kind of a, um, in the work that we do. Thank you. Okay, so I'll introduce myself now. So my name is Bernie Griffin. I'm the Senior Coordinator of Residence Life at Goldie Beacom College, located in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, and for me, motivation really is, you know, what is your end goal and how are you gonna reach that? Like, that's what motivates me. Um, and in this presentation, I'll get into more goal setting and everything like that. Um, but I just wanted to start off and see where everybody else thought motivation comes from and what it means to you. So let's see. So motivation, it's more like lack of motivation right now if you guys really think about it with everything going on. So here is uh, the first cat meme of the day. It says, I'm not lazy, I'm waiting for inspiration to hit me, should be here anytime now. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have felt like that some mornings, probably this morning, and you guys still got out of bed and, and joined me on Zoom, so I appreciate it. But motivation is described as the general desire or willingness of someone to do something. But where does the motivation come from? Where do we get it? 
we get motivation from numerous places. They could be yourself. You feel like you need to prove something or do something for yourself. You feel like you need to prove it to your friends or do something for them or your family. Your coworkers also motivate you to, to do better and to get to reach your goals. I can speak from that personally, um, as well as a love for your job. You know, we always, we might not always like the job, but we love our job. And that's what makes it, you know, doable at the end of the day. Um, but this also impacts the resident assistants as well. You know, their motivation for getting the job done and doing everything they can to make the position the greatest that it can be. Um, but obviously with everything going on right now, it's kind of hard to reach those goals when they're not sure what tomorrow is gonna look like for them in the position, whether it's policy changes, whether it's personal with class, you know, motivation is hard to come by right now. So one of those things is definitely Zoom fatigue. I don't know if you guys have felt it. I've definitely felt it. Um, so that's another cat meme there me attending a meeting at 8.30 in the morning, which I'm sure some of you guys probably felt like this before I, before we admitted you into the, the Zoom session. My feelings aren't hurt, trust me. It's, it's hard to get up in the morning sometimes. On top of, you know, technological difficulties, which you guys will probably see me have throughout this presentation, which is why I keep looking to my right. But, you know, I don't know how many of you guys know the Brady Bunch, but this I thought this was funny with Alice, turn on your video, no, it's the bottom, the button on the bottom, not that one over to your left. I'm not sure how many of you guys have tried to talk people through issues on Zoom, but it can it can be exhausting at times. Um, so, you know, in our career, we are a person focused, you know, job, you know, we love to be around people, we love to help people. And it seems like kind of overnight, we were kind of shut off from that and forced to be either completely virtual or completely to ourselves. Um, that's hard, it's hard for us as professionals, but it's also hard as resident assistants. Um, you know, they, they're used to socializing with their residents, with each other, and they've kind of had that taken away from them. Um, but at the same time, we do have this great thing called Zoom or Skype, or there's endless things that we could use to connect with each other. But Zoom fatigue can really impact how people are feeling and really me mess with their well being in a way. So I always recommend for at least 20 minutes that you're disconnected from a screen for both professional staff and the resident, the RAs, because, you know, they are on it just as much as we are, if not more, you know, there's FaceTime, there's Zoom class, there's meetings. Um, so they, they need time to disconnect. So some things I recommend for them to do when they disconnect is meditate, do yoga, maybe even read a book for a little bit, take a walk, um, you know, and part of this ties into self care, self care for themselves and self care for us as professionals. Because um, how can we motivate our staff if we're you know, I think somebody mentioned filling your bucket. If we have an empty bucket, how can we help another RA fill their bucket? So I'm just curious. Again, I want to kind of get you guys talking because I know it's early in the morning. So just wanted to know what kind of guys, what kind of things do you guys do to uh, to do self care for yourself, or what do you encourage your resident assistants to do for self care? Feel free to either uh, to unmute or you can put it in the chat if you don't feel like talking yet. <laughs> I'll go. Um, hi, I'm uh, Rebecca Barton. I work as a residence hall director at Cal U of PA. Um, one of the things that I really stress um, to uh, my RAs, uh, my staff is just like whatever you have to do to take time for yourself. So even if it's just like taking a walk around campus to kind of like clear the air, getting out of the office, um, just anything that, that they don't focus on work school or anything that's stressing them out. So whether it's like, hey, let's go grab lunch together and talk about, you know, some fun things that you're going to do over the weekend. Um, but just making sure that they they take even if it's five minutes, and I know like five minutes might not seem like a lot of time, but sometimes like a five minute just way to decompress from your day and everything that's going on really helps them out. And I just really try to advocate that for them. Hi, I'm Chantel. I am um, she her hers. I'm at Coppice University. I'm the resident hall director um, for our first year students in the mix. So um, same kind of idea as Rebecca has. Um, I encourage my staff selfish hour. Um, it's an hour uninterrupted of just time they, did, they, they get to do whatever they want. Um, and uh, actually I did pre-pandemic, but definitely during the pandemic, I encourage them um, to attempt it daily. So not just once a week and, and encourage them not to use that time for homework, not to use that time 
to catch up on anything else. Like whatever it is that you're going to do for an entire hour that makes you happy, do that. Um, and then if they figure, if they, if I find that they can't do that on their own when they're in office hours, I'll send them home. Like I'll send them away. Like, hey, go to your go to your room. Your office hour begins now. Come back in an hour, kind of thing. Anybody else want to um, share? Thank you guys. Um, those that did share, I appreciate it. Um, so the, the really important thing when it comes to, to Zoom fatigue to Tim, remember, um, is that RAs aren't really realizing that they need self-care after it because they didn't do anything really physical. You know, they're used to running building to building, putting out physical, well, not real fires, but metaphorical fires. Um, they're used to doing multiple things throughout the day for us. And it's tend to slow down because we're not in per like we're not doing things in person. We're doing things through Zoom. So the physical aspect isn't there, but being on Zoom all day, that's definitely mental. And they don't realize they need the self-care just as much as when they are physically running from place to place. So it's very important to, to encourage these type of things like self-care. Take an hour for yourself. Um, you know, take an hour to talk to family members who you may feel disconnected from or each other. Um, as we're trying to figure out how to keep a staff bonded when we have to be six feet apart is difficult, not only for us, but for them. So definitely um, you guys made some really good points with self-care and how important it, it is. Okay, so when it comes to the mental health, like what do resident assistants really have to deal with? So their decision to stay a resident assistant so when everything happened, you know, when we had our RA selection, at least, you know, COVID was a thing, but we didn't really think it was going to become what it is today. Um, so they had no idea when they accepted this position, like what that was going to entail for the next year for them. They knew what happened in the past and that's what they kind of signed up for. But as we all know, that's not a reality anymore. Um, so they had a decision to make. Either they could, you know, stay on campus and still be resident assistants. They could return home and come back in the spring when they feel like things may be somewhat back to what it was. Um, or they could decide they didn't want to be a resident assistant anymore. And what does that mean for their finances if they still needed to live on campus? Or what does that mean for, you know, the, the idea they have for themselves for this year? So it's important to, you know, to check on them, make sure like they're good with their decision. Do they have any questions, any concerns? You know, make them feel appreciated the fact that they either made the decision to stay or not to stay. Um, that's that's definitely important as well because they, whatever they did, they did it for their best well-being. And as you know, professional staff, we need to we need to support them at the end of the day. Learning, so they're still learning how to connect to their residents and friends in a new way. Um, you know, you had to learn, they had to learn new college policies pretty much overnight and procedures because as you guys know, the CDC changes everything. It feels like every other day, once we feel like we understand what's happening, the next day, everything we did was completely wrong and now we have to do it a new way. And for us as professional staff, you know, we're kind of, you know, mostly at the table hearing this information and we have to kind of bring it down to, to the RE. So, um, it's, it's interesting to see like how much of it changes and how fast they have to keep up with it um, and how that information is being uh, construed to them, how they're going to take the information, what they're going to do with it. So I think that is um, definitely something that can, that can play with their mental health because once they feel like they have a grasp, change is not something everybody's easy to come with and we're asking them every day to change what's happening. So that's definitely something that's a little more difficult to manage. Programming. So what does that look like now that we're limited to either in limited in person or completely virtual? Um, when programming was in person, you know, residents had it a little bit easier because they could just go down to the student, the student center and be like, hey guys, come check out this event going on. My office is putting on this great event. There's free food. Come grab some pizza. There's this, there's giveaways. Come on, come on down, follow me there. Um, we found it's a lot harder to get students to click on a link from their living room to join us, which I will go back to Zoom fatigue, but that's that's a whole other issue at the same time. Um, but it's, it's a lot more difficult, even when we have gift cards or we have virtual things we're sending them, it's still difficult to get them to click on a link. 
but it's also still important to program because you know we're not sure what other senses of connection these residents are getting. Um, so for example, like my institution right now, everybody's home, we didn't really open the residence halls for the fall semester. So we're not sure what type of connection our students at home are getting. So our RAs are programming online to get them to kind of connect with each other before the spring semester. But it's challenging. And one of the things that we've had to discuss with our resident assistants is, you know, just because one person came to your program or two people came to your program doesn't mean it wasn't successful. If that one or two people took something away from your program or it was an hour to connect with another person, that's important. Like you were able to help somebody today. But it can also be, you know, mentally draining for their RA because they plan, they plan, they plan, and they work so hard on it for it to not get the attendance they were kind of hoping for. So that can definitely be challenging for them mentally about what that means. Classes. Um, I don't know about your institutions, but I'm getting a mix from my RAs about whether or not they like the online classes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes it's, oh, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Like, I love being online. I can't believe we didn't have this before. I never want to go back. And then sometimes it's like, I just want to be in person. I don't know how I'm going to pass this class. I can't teach myself. This professor doesn't do a great job explaining things to me. Um, so that can be really you know, challenging to overcome, especially when you're used to one on one in class or it being easiest day after class and ask the professor for help. Um, you know, if there's a math class, it's difficult to explain what's going on. Um, so definitely how classes are changing is definitely is definitely challenging for the resident assistants or even thinking about what spring is going to look like with classes. Are they are we going to stay, you know, online? Or is it going to be in person? Is it going to be hybrid? Am I going to be comfortable in class if I do have to go back physically? All these things are things that they're thinking about um, a lot. So it's important to make sure we're, we're talking to them about it and that we're helping them through these decisions they need to make when it comes to their degree. Because at the end of the day, they're a student and we want them to cross that stage. COVID or no COVID, we want to get these uh, students, these RAs across that stage. And then there's a fear, you know, there's a fear of exposing themselves or their family members, you know, in this, in this uh, profession, we are more likely to be exposed because we're are around students more likely than most. Um, so they may have a fear that they could, you know, contract COVID-19 and, you know, it's okay to be concerned and we need to listen to their concerns, but we also need to reassure them that our institution is doing everything we can to protect them from everything that's going on. If they have concerns, listen to them. If there's things that we can do to make them feel more safe on campus, then that's something that we, we need to do. Whether it's, you know, disposable masks in their room for residents if they lost theirs or need one, or extra hand sanitizers that they can have when they're on rounds. Um, I know at our institution, we did uh, face masks that said staff on them. And then we also have the uh, face guards as well that they wear. So that way they're double protected and gloves. So that way they can feel like, you know, one, we're listening to them and two, we care about their safety, you know, just as much as the residents. So fear is definitely on the list um, for what they're thinking about right now. You know, and the list goes on because resident assistants, they have to deal with things that most residents will never have to, to deal with. Uh, you know, they take on the role of being somebody that everybody can go to, they can talk to, they can help the late nights, the sleepless nights, um, just like us. But, you know, they're still students. They're still working at a full-time degree. They're still trying to reach their goal to get the degree so they can get a job. Um, so we have to keep in mind, like, when all these stressors play into effect, like, that can definitely have an impact on their mental health. And what they do moving forward um, could impact with their view of the college or the RA position. So it's very important to make sure like that we're listening and that we're helping them through these times of uncertainty. Okay, and then here's my next cat meme. So, but what am I supposed to do now? I know I, I kind of told you guys everything that's like going on. You're probably like, yeah, we already know this. So what do we do about it? So now my little tips. So what's the important thing is to make the most out of this time. You know, I'm really big on changing a negative to a positive. 
So instead of being like, wow, we're really kind of stuck where we're at, or there's not really much to do, you know, my motto was let's make the most out of this time. Let's try to do everything we can to make this experience the best that we can because it's not going anywhere. So we can do one of two things. We can sit there and be negative or we can be positive and try to keep, you know, everything going the best that we can. So the main reason for this, pro the, for this uh, presentation was keep connected, you know, with your students, staff. So that is very, very important. There are um, keeping connected with your student staff are gonna be similar experiences as you, were do, as you are during this crazy time. Um, so they may rely on you to help them steer this, you know? Um, we're trying to figure it out just like they are, but we know more information than they do at the same time. So it's important that you're staying connected with them, you're checking on them and doing everything you can to make sure they understand that you are there to support them through, through whatever there is going on during this time. So one thing that we do is a group chat. So we have a group chat with our uh, resident assistants where it's all professional staff and our entire staff together. Then I also encourage you know, the resident assistants to have their own group chat because you know, it's important for them to feel like they could talk about things, they can vent to each other, they can be their own support network, especially because they don't get to see each other every day. They don't get to hang out in the lounge every day and, and talk. So it's important for them to have this kind of outlet so that way they're able to talk to each other and build that relationship that we hope they get throughout their time as being a resident assistant. So we also celebrate accomplishments or birthdays so accomplishments, you know, if somebody is able to get a job during this time, that's very exciting. If people are able to get cars, that's very, that's very exciting. They get A's in a class they weren't sure of. That's something to celebrate, you know, it doesn't have to be something big where it costs money. You could do something easy where you just, you know, make a little card and you send it to them, you know, thinking about you. Um, if you do want to spend a little bit of money, you can make little goodie bags and be like, oh, good, you guys you know, you did this. Congratulations. I'm proud of you for doing this. That I'm proud of you can really be the motivator that gets them to do better, to strive to be better. Because, um, you know, it's it's a good feeling when somebody's proud. So reminding them when they hit those accomplishments, it's definitely, definitely important. Um, you know, when you do have staff meetings, it's important to highlight birthdays, give them a shout out, say happy birthday. We're proud of you. Like those things really mean a lot. We like to do kudos bags or jars. So I don't know if you guys have ever done a kudos bag or jar, um, but basically what we've done in the past is we gave everybody a brown bag or a mason jar and we told everybody to pick a name out of a hat and everybody got one person in the group and they got to decorate that bag or jar for that person. So, you know, we had a lot of basketball players on our on our team. So they would decorate the bag like using their number and like their name and you know some other things they liked about like the beach and stuff like that. And then we would put them someplace in our office and people could come by and drop off little notes of encouragement like kudos to you for helping me um, with my math, you know, my math, uh, studying for my math final. I was able to get an A thanks to you or kudos to you for helping cover um, a duty shift the one night because somebody wasn't feeling well. Um, and that way they're able to exchange these ideas. And then when they're down and they need a little encouragement, they need a little bit of motivation, they're able to revisit the bag and open it and be like, wow, I did make a difference here, here, and here. So let me, you know, let me get back to what I'm doing. Let me do better. So I'm a big person on kudos. The little bit of kudos can go a long way, um, but it's even better when they have something physically there to remind them whenever they aren't feeling like they're doing the, the best they can. Uh, so Zoom get togethers or socials, those are really fun. You know, it's important that we still have these things so that way they can feel like there's people there. You know, there are already teams there for them. Professional staff is there for them. Um, one thing that we've been doing that has been pretty successful, I think the RE seem to really like it, is we've been doing um, themed Zoom meetings. So meaning if um, the first one that we did was a Disney theme. So we sent out a text message the day of our RA meeting and we were like, you know, be our guest. Come tonight at, I think it was 9 p.m. for the RA meeting and show your favorite Disney movie. So when everybody logged on, their virtual background was some type of Disney movie that they loved. 
So it was really interesting to see what movies they liked, why they liked it, and it gave them a chance to kind of revisit their childhood when it was a simpler time and kind of just get to see other people's, you know, sides for a minute. We also did a around the world one. So that one I was a little more corny on. I texted the group chat and was like, get your passports ready. We're going on a trip. See you at 9 p.m. Um, and show off your, you know, somewhere around the world. And then, you know, the Zoom waiting room, I sent a message saying like, get your passports ready, you're about to board. And they were really like, okay, that, that's, a, that's a lot, but that's me as a person and they accept it. So we got to join the uh, Zoom and everybody got to show some place in the world, which was nice since we can't really travel as much right now. It was nice to see where people would pick. So that's something that we've done that's been really fun and I encourage other people to kind of do it. Um, it shows a little bit of personality and gets them all kind of talking and connecting. So definitely recommend that. And then also there are streaming services. So that's exciting. There's um, Netflix Party, which I'm sure most people here have either used or heard about. I've heard that Hulu has now added one, but I haven't personally tried that one out. And then Disney Plus now also has one where you can uh, stream you know, with people to, to talk throughout a movie or to connect. Um, which is exciting because I'm one of those people who is obsessed with with Hamilton like since July 4th I think I've heard the album 95 million times um, I would try to make this Hamilton themed but it just wasn't working so um, definitely connect with people using that I love movies I think it's a great way to kind of um, disconnect from reality so it's nice to be able to do that still and talk with people yes it is still using a screen but it's definitely less draining than sitting on zoom and having to, to learn or to talk is kind of just like mellow. You just watch the screen and just enjoy your time. Um, so the other thing that I recommend is trying new hobbies. So, you know, right now, a lot of things are virtual and they can be free. Who doesn't love free? I know I do. So, you know, take a time to check out these free resources that are out there. You can do things like touring a museum, streaming a DIY event. I love those things where you can go to and it's like a paint and sip, but you don't um, you don't have to pay for anything unless you unless you need to get the supplies and you kind of just sit there and watch them paint and you get to follow along. People pay like fifty dollars for that, and right now it's kind of free online. Um, so encourage your student staff to kind of venture out and try new things, try new educational avenues while it, while it's free that is always a good way to, to stay busy. So the next thing I say is set goals. So I had mentioned earlier that goals for me is a big, big thing. So um, for right now, I want you guys to kind of brainstorm in your head for a second, um, three types of goals. A short-term goal, meaning probably within the next two weeks, then a goal in the next year, and a goal within the next 10 years. So a goal in the next two weeks, a goal in the next year, and a goal in the next 10 years. I'm gonna, gonna give you a minute to kind of brainstorm those and write those down. Everybody prepare for the awkward silence.
Okay, I'm gonna give you guys like another minute, but I'm, I'm gonna ask for volunteers. So just prepare now. Okay, does anybody want to share their goals? I'll share. Thank you. Um, my two week goal is to send out thank you cards to all of my staff just to for a little pick me up for them. Um, my year goal is to find a new job. So if you know anyone knows of any positions open, hit me up. Um, and my 10 year goal is to travel more and to visit at least two new countries. Those are some good goals. Thank you for sharing. Does anybody else want to share um, their goals? My two week goal is to complete all my homework for the remaining of the semester for grad school. Um, my one year goal is to map out the plan, whether I'm going to go into counseling full time or continue in res life. Um, my 10 year goal is um, I literally just wrote family and business booming. So whatever that's supposed to mean. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Anybody else want to share? I don't want to cut you off. It's hard for me to see everybody. Um, in two weeks, I'd like to complete my um, spring RA staffing model since uh, we'll have more students coming back to campus and have to figure out what our staff looks like. Uh, within the next year, I plan to pay off my student loan. It's a big deal. And uh, in 10 years, I would like to say that I visited each Major League Baseball stadium. Uh, that's a big thing for me. So, Those are nice goals, too. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for sharing those. For me, goals are very important because in my, in my humble opinion, goals are what keeps people motivated. You know, that's what our end goal is to reach those. So whatever it takes to get to those goals, that's what's going to motivate us the most. Um, so this can be true with your resident assistants. So it's important for them to set goals for themselves and to share those goals with you so you as professional staff can help them achieve those. So um, I like to do things with RAs that focuses on their goals. So one thing that we've done is um, I asked the RAs to like email me three goals they had for themselves while they were resident assistants, at least three. It could be 15, it could be whatever they wanted, but I asked for at least three. Because you know if we don't tell them at least, they give us the bare minimum. So I said at least three. So they sent them to me and what I did was create a little poster of those goals for them with a little quote to remind them that they are capable of reaching these goals. And we need to be reminded, look at this. You know, whether you wanna print it out, you wanna keep it on your phone, you wanna make it your phone background. Here's a little, you know, something for me to you to show that these goals are reachable and that I think you can do it. And you know, sometimes they need that little boost, especially during midterm or finals week is when I like to hit them with the, here's your goals, you got this. Um, another thing that we've done is goldfish buddies is what I like to call them. But again, the RAs write down a list of goals they have for themselves that they want to um, accomplish either semesterly or for the year. And then I see all those lists and we, we divide them up. So we partner up RAs, they don't know who has each other and their goal is to motivate each other without letting them know who has their name. So example was, um, I had a resident assistant and their goal was they wanted to do better on their GPA this semester. So their goldfish buddy who they didn't know what it was or who it was, they would, um, every time that person had a test, they would drop a little note in their mailbox saying like, you got this today, you keep working hard, you're gonna reach your goal, just keep going. 
And every, every single time this person had a test, that's what they did. And by the end of the semester, the person brought their GPA up to, the, to what they had hoped to have. So that goldfish buddy went and bought them a gift card and said, you did it. Now here's a treat from me to you. Um, so that was really interesting to see that that little push really drove that person to do better and to, to reach their goals. So that's why I think, you know, it's, it's very important. It doesn't have to be monetary, you know, just saying like, hey, you got this, a pun on words, like those kind of things can really, you know, drive a person to be like, wow, somebody's really looking out for me. Let me show them I can do this. And it was a proud moment for both the RE who encouraged them and for the RE who completed the GPA. So I really like those. I think it's fun and it keeps them connected as a staff um, and keeps that motivation going strong. Um, so, you know, we say, I say journal your thoughts. It's important for REs when they feel like, you know, there's a lot going on. They might need to take time to center themselves, sit down and write out all their thoughts, all their concerns. So that way, when they come to, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings, you can say like, how was your week? How do you, like, how was everything going? You know, they have something they can kind of look back on and like talk about, well, you know, Monday was a little chaotic or Tuesday was really good. Um, so I always encourage them, like if they have something to talk about, to write it down, to journal your thoughts. Um, all this time of uncertainty, I'm sure is creating a lot of chaos in their brain. I know it does in mine sometimes. So it's good to be able just to sit down and kind of just write it out. So of course there's more that we haven't, you know, gotten a chance to talk about. So I wanted to see, you know, if you guys had any tips yourselves on what you're doing to, to motivate your staff. I know I believe it was Elizabeth said that she's sending thank you cards out to her staff to say, hey, I'm thinking about you and just know you are appreciated. And that can really help with motivation. Just that word, I'm proud of you, you're appreciated, keep up the good work. Those things can make people wanna achieve more. So does anybody else have any um, things they wanna share that what they've been doing to motivate their staff? Also, um, right after um, training and moving to thank my staff for all of the hard work that they put in during that really random time and our move in was, which is normally like two days was was spread out over the course of a week. Um, so to thank them for all of the hard work. I um, also made them all um, staff face masks. And then I put together what my friend um, <laughs> coined the term Sani Fannies. So I bought them all small fanny packs and um, filled them with disposable face masks and latex gloves and hand sanitizer for them. That's a great idea. You know, it shows that it helps them with their job, but that you still appreciate them for, do for doing the job and doing it so well. So that's a great idea. Um, I know I've had a couple people say, um, oh, I'm sorry, does somebody want to go? Yeah, I mean, I can share pre-COVID um, what I did. We don't have any students on campus. Um, our school just decided that we were going to uh, keep the residence halls closed for the fall semester. But what I would do, you know, kind of like pre-COVID with my staff, um, every every month, one of their one-on-one -on -one meetings would be very informal. So it would just be a way um, for us to talk about things that weren't work-related. Um, just to let them know that, you know, I care about you more than just as a staff member. So what I would do, um, I would let them pick, like I would um, go eat lunch with them or I would go to the gym and work out with them or we would just take a walk and chat. And like, there would even be times that I would just pop in um, when they were doing duty rounds just to like have a very informal conversation just for them to know, like, I care about you. I love the job that you do. I appreciate the job that you do because you make my job so much easier when you do it well, but I want you to know, I'm gonna go that step further just so that you know that I care because I think sometimes that helps motivate them, just knowing that you care about them more than just the job that they're doing. So that's very important because I feel like, you know, as resident assistants, that's all they're known as, as is be a resident assistant. So it's nice when we take the time to realize they're actually a person too outside of that role. So that's a really good point. I appreciate you sharing that. 
So in um, uh, in my office, we have a shout out board. It's kind of like a cap and staple thing. So it sits on the wall with all their photos. So each week as the weekly reports will come in, they always have the opportunity to shout each other out. So I put, I, we make sure we move their pictures in the middle to, you know, about see who's being shout out that week. And the other things that um, I found that are super important this time around because because it's so unorthodox this semester, um, is they really in like they're missing the connection, like the like the people interaction connection. So um, we decided as a staff, um, so it's two halls on campus. Um, so, and it's only two hall directors, so we hold down the duty rotation. So uh, my staff went out on our staff outing, like we went, we cooked breakfast together and then we like went out hiking and the other building covered our duty. And then they're gonna go on their staff outing, um, I think November 14th, so we're gonna cover their duty. And um, uh, we also like plan like a staff photo shoot to kind of just do something together. And then of course, they're looking forward towards the holiday party at the end of the year when we do, gift exchange and where we kind of just take a moment to honor to honor them but I think I'm definitely going to start incorporating um what Elizabeth is doing is definitely giving them thank you notes for the time um for their efforts and what they're doing now because it is a hard time and a lot of my staff would make super great RAs outside of COVID but they're struggling right now in COVID and I don't want to I and um I don't want to take that away from them. I literally just told one of my one of my RAs and our one on one yesterday. I was like, I feel like you would be super awesome as a. She was like, Yeah, this is this is this is hard, and my staff like Elizabeth has been our moving process was two weeks versus one week. So they were here a month before the students moved in, and I have a staff people. I have staff were in Baltimore from Michigan from New York. Um, so they were high risk areas at one point in time when New York was and they couldn't go into New Jersey, they couldn't go home. They have not been home since they've been here. No, and that's very important too to recognize that they have these struggles that they can't go home and that that disconnects them from their family, which can be a huge struggle and it's just mentally like I can't go home. Yes, I might have some place to stay here, but that alone would suck the motivation out of anybody. So uh, after fall training, I gave my staff two extra days that they could use throughout the semester to take off, um, just to try and like thank them as a, um, I know you guys have all put in a lot of work for this, you know, you deserve some extra time off. Um, and then I took one of my staff meetings and just spent the entire time talking about mental health and self-care and trying to see where they were at, where they needed to go. Um, we were lucky, we're right by, um, I'm at Penn State University, the Arboretum's across the street from our building. So we went over there actually for that meeting. Um, we're able to distance a lot better out there and it was you know, one of two in-person meetings we've had all semester. That's a very good point too. Even just relocating from the, the stressors of the job can be a huge just relaxation as soon as they leave just like five feet away. It's like, okay, break time. So you guys really did some really good examples of motivation. Um, some other things that we've been doing is uh, me and my other ACs, we did um, we did their door decks for them when they, everybody moved on. So we made the resident door decks and we made them door decks to take that job away from them because they had done so much. So we ended up closing a few days before moving. So like we had to change everything and they like they were right on board with helping us. So we were like, okay, let's just go ahead and make their door decks and the resident door decks because they, they need a break. Um, another thing that we've been doing too is trying to take interest in things that interest them. Um, so the, the main example I have for that is I am not a big, big football person. I have my one team, that's who I watch, that's who I root for. Um, but I realized a lot of the resident assistants are really into football. So, um, created a fantasy football league, have no idea how it works or how it's functioning well as it is. Um, uh, but they are enjoying it. We have a separate group chat for the RAs who did join. So we can kind of talk to each other. Uh, half the time I don't know what they're talking about, but they appreciate the fact that we're trying to take interest in what they're doing. Because I know during the regular school year, the one goal I personally have, because we have a lot of athletes, is to attend at least one of their games um, for every single athlete we have. So since I can't go to one of their games, I figure let's try to take interest in what they're doing. Um, another thing that we've been talking about is possibly starting a Among Us game. A lot of people are talking about it. I've downloaded it. I haven't actually like done anything with it yet but I've heard a lot of good things. So we talked about maybe making one with the RAs to do, which would be fun. So those are things like we're taking interest in things that they're doing. So that way we can learn and participate with them. 
um, in it. Not saying we're learning fast or well, but they appreciate the fact that we're trying to connect with them on a, on a personal level. Um, so thank you guys for sharing all those. I really appreciate it. And then um, I believe we have a few minutes for questions if anybody has any. Okay, perfect. Well, if you don't have any questions, I will go ahead and drop my email in the chat. So that way, in case you guys want to connect after or talk about more things when it comes to motivation and staying connected, I'm happy to do so if you want to brainstorm ideas. So just let me know if there is anything that you need. And don't forget to take the um, survey. I put the QR link here or the QR code is the proper word. Um, so make sure you do your evaluation or if you need the link, just let me know. And uh, thank you guys for joining me this morning. I know it was early. I know I asked for a lot of participation. So I appreciate you guys doing that. And I look forward to going through the rest of the conference with you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, don't forget, as you said, to fill out the, the survey. And also don't forget you have until 10.05 to vote if you're the voting delegate for um, our elections today.